Stop expressing yourself, Germans. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'll go. So thank you, Mysterious Voice, and welcome back to Around the Weird and Strike the Sun MD. Uh, it is I, Mr. Nothing, uh, and today we are talking about another uh, movie that has interested um, both Lucas and I, uh, part of our monthly um uh, videos where we talk about various movies. Uh, and today, our, the movie that we are talking about is uh, Spooktober themed. Uh, got a little bit of horror going on here. Uh, I am referring to The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari, um, which is a uh, German expressionism genre horror film from 1920, directed by uh, Robert Wein, written by Hans. Uh, Jenowitz um, and Carl Mayer, and starring Werner Krauss as the nefarious Dr. Caligari, and Frederick Feher as uh, um, uh, Fra uh, a man named Francis who is running into Dr. Caligari. Uh, and again, as I as I as I mentioned, I am joined by Lucas from uh, Strike the Sun MD. How are you doing today, Lucas? I'm doing pretty well. I'm excited to talk about this movie. I think it's the first time that we chose a movie that the other person had already seen. That's okay. It's quite short and it rocks. So <laughs> it I was happy indeed. to watch it. It does indeed rock. Um, uh, for those out there who don't know, German Expressionism was a genre of film from uh, the early 1900s, uh, around the time of 1920 and peaking around 1925, unfortunately going away because of the rise of Hitler in 1930 uh, and him sort of uh, exiling all the Jewish filmmakers who were uh, were uh, uh, like German Jew Jewish filmmakers who were working on it. But German Expressionism is a style that just foregoes realism and focuses on uh, what I would say zany set design uh extreme close-ups um of, of characters dealing with with rather terrifying emotions and focusing more on the um uh, focusing or like focusing more on on characters than anything else and then uh it, it's all it's also part of the silent film genre i don't think german expressionism ever made it into uh uh like talkies so to speak but it's possible i i, I might i just might not have seen that that type of well movie. not not at that time but certainly if you've seen any tim burton film they look just like this movie <laughs> yeah he clearly so uh, the inspiration lives on i suppose yeah, uh, what you're saying is is something I was going to get at later in the video. But this this uh, this movie and German expressionism have a clear legacy. Uh, you can you can see uh, again in, in Tim Burton films, as you said, uh, horror like has definitely borrowed from this in general, and uh, it, it has it it's it's a style that deserves to be borrowed upon. I, I think because uh, it, like German expressionism is so much fun and uh just so different from everything else uh so it's yeah. it's always good to just go back and visit a movie like this i've seen nosferatu uh and although it's not a german expressionist movie the 1925 phantom of the opera does um does fall into that uh sort of horror uh, silent horror that um that leans on german expressionism a little bit so yeah. uh it's yeah both of those are, are really good movies and i can't wait to see more like spoiler alert for for this video i really enjoyed this and it seems like you did too yeah i i really enjoyed it i when you told me last month that we were gonna watch it it was like when i first watched it uh i took a lot uh i saw that my letterbox review was much more sort of literary and uh academic in terms of what i got from it uh but apparently i didn't like it too much the first time i saw it, but i thought i remembered like definitely the way that the set designs work and the makeup and and uh the the close-ups left a pretty strong imprint on my mind and i remember thinking those were pretty good i don't know what i thought then or why i didn't like it too much but uh yeah i i'm astounded by it. i think the set design and all that 
enhances the feeling of anxiety uh, because everything uh, is just so weird looking and misshapen and feels kind of dreamlike and horrifying. <laughs> Something I, I've only just started thinking about is maybe that's because of who the storyteller is in the movie. Oh, yeah, actually, uh, I read very recently, I was trying to look some stuff up uh, about this movie, just so we can have some uh, other uh, issues of discussion. I learned that they did not originally have the frame story of who is telling the story about what happened. It's just the story of the parade, not the parade, the the fair coming to the town. Uh, but then like producers wanted the frame story for some reason and the director fought over it. But maybe we can explain a little bit about who is telling the story and what that framing is. So yeah, the, the, this, this we'll, we'll head into the movie here. Um, but the story uh, begins with uh, Francis and an old man uh, in an unfamiliar uh, sort of uh, uh, setting. We don't quite know where we're at right now, but uh, Francis is sitting on a bench with an old man and he's uh, like his, his a woman he calls his wife is walking by and she, he's like, there's a reason this woman is acting very strangely right now. Allow me to tell you about our encounter with a man named Dr. Caligari. Uh, mm -hmm. And so, um, like, we, we then flash back to um, where the story took place. Dr. Caligari is seeking a permit for his carnival fair freak show thing, um, yeah. <laughs> where, he, where he has a, um, like, he's asking for a somnambulist, uh, which uh, is a sleepwalker. Um, uh, yes. just a, it's just a fancy name for a sleepwalker. Uh, mm -hmm. And the the clerk um who's uh who's a bit of a hard ass is like this is weird stop stop uh like yeah. this, this this sounds like a joke he's just making fun of uh, dr caligari and uh later that night the clerk is murdered mysteriously uh, part of the many murders that are going to take place or attempted murders that are going to take place over the course of the story what did you think of this this scene lucas uh yeah i I think I was cackling about it because, I mean, there's a certain, I think part of it for me was just like the way that they have to act. Um, it's almost like a stage play. They have to be much bigger because they're silent, right? Uh, so you can't convey your your emotion clearly through your, your voice or voice acting in any way. So they have to have uh, bigger makeup, bigger actions. Um, even though they, I don't think they really did anything like too big and goofy. Um, I, I was kind of like laughing about that, but more importantly, uh, definitely like the idea of somebody coming into town and being like, I need a sleepwalker for my show <laughs> was just kind of silly. So it makes perfect sense that the clerk would be like, go away. You're just a weirdo. <laughs> and and Dr. Caligari looks like a weirdo. Like the minute yeah. he shows up on screen, you're like, this guy is is bad news. <laughs> yeah, he he does not look um he does not look like a friendly fellow. Although I have to say, I did message you this when before you read it. He does look like a friendly fellow because if you notice his gloves, he's got Mickey Mouse gloves, and I can't take him seriously. <laughs> Oh, you said you, you 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 had mentioned that. I just didn't pay attention to that when uh, when I was watching the movie. Like there was a bunch of other things going on. I, I just didn't. I just couldn't. Yeah. I think because it was my second time watching it, I didn't see it the first time I saw it. But this time watching it, I saw the Mickey Mouse gloves, just white gloves with three dark lines here, and I was like, ah. But he's a menacing figure. I mean, I'm making light of him and the way he dresses and. We're joking about how he looks, but he's pretty disturbing because he's this somnambulist experiment uh, that he's got going on. Well, it seems like an experiment anyway. The way he shows off the somnambulist he gets, the um, Caesar or Caesar, is pretty weird uh, when he finally does get his fair 
uh, going and has people to watch the show. Yeah, he yeah, like he's he's minute like he he's not exactly a physical threat. Like I'm sure he could probably beat you up, but he's more of a of just standing there, kind of menacing, like <laughs> thinking of ways he could destroy you, which is yeah. is, is scary. Hmm. Uh, but we see Francis and Alan um, talking about the fair. Uh, they mm -hmm. seem like they're great pals, and they eventually do show up, uh, and they watch um, Caligari unveil the somnambulist, uh, Ch Cesare, Caesar. Um, yeah, I, I don't know how to pronounce it. Yeah, that I'm going to say Caesar. Mm -hmm. That's what I was saying. Okay, Caesar. Uh, yeah, he unveils him, and uh, uh, Doctor Caligari says that some or uh, that Caesar can predict the future once he wakes up, and he does. And then Alan, like, uh, like Francis doesn't want him to ask a question, but Alan's like, "Hey, when am I gonna die?" And yeah. Caesar's like, "Oh, you're gonna die before the morning gets here." Yeah, that's right. Uh, but even before he says that, I think something even weirder is that he says Caesar has been sleeping for 23 years. <laughs> <laughs> Where yeah. did he get that number? I guess he's 23 years old. But um, yeah, this whole scene with Caesar or Caesar or however you say his name coming out of the, I guess, the cabinet, um, this coffin shape thing. Uh, with sort of two folding doors uh, to come out. And the way he wakes up, where his eyes sort of slowly get bigger and bigger, especially with the, the way the makeup is, he is quite a frightening figure. Uh, I was thinking, like, this came out 103 years ago. And he is kind of frightening. I've certainly seen sort of scarier or more horrifying visuals in a film these days, but, like, I, I imagine when the world was smaller, so to speak, less connected, uh, and there were far fewer entertainment options to, uh, and more restricted in what they could show, like Caesar and and this foreboding warning of you'll die tonight, had to like really grip people's hearts and like have them shaking in their boots. Well, um, I don't think there was a, much restriction here. This is from before the Hayes Code. Uh, yeah, true. And that's in Germany as well. But what I mean is, like, I don't think anybody would have thought to show, like, blood and guts and and that kind of stuff. Okay. Like, it, it does get a little bit physical here, or it, it, the implication of some physicality with the stabbings for the mm -hmm. murders. But, um, yeah, I, I think that I thought this was a really great scene. It's pretty disturbing. Uh, but then the two young men kind of go off. <laughs> and uh, Is that when they meet the young girl who's the one who's lost her mind? Or is that a little bit later? I think so. Um, but I, yeah. I do love the music in this, uh, this yeah. big feel of the somnambulist. It, uh, the music throughout the movie is really great, but I think it adds yeah. to the, the element of horror. Uh, but... Uh, yeah, uh, so they they they're pining over this this woman who hasn't quite lost her mind yet, yeah. um, but she does over the course of the of the movie, and I think Alan is even killed. Um, yeah, they, like uh, some some dark shadow like uh, is seen strangling him to death, mm -hmm. uh, and um, we're left to wonder who could this be. Although the shadow does kind of look in the shape of the somnambulist, so it's not that big of a surprise, and it's probably. Yeah. Meant not meant to be but uh this this launches a an investigation and um francis consoles uh this this woman mm -hmm. um and uh dr Callag like everyone's trying to figure out like uh if what uh what the somnambulist is doing like they, they uh, because you know he shows up in this town and suddenly there's a bunch of murders uh, but they do apprehend a a general criminal um because there's another woman who's like help murderer and the police come yeah and arrest this them. man <laughs> this man is the best part of the movie i think he's such a ridiculous figure because he for some reason that i don't think is ever explained he wants to murder this old woman with a knife just like the other dead bodies have been done done in 
but because of the investigation going on, he gets caught. And then he explains, like, I, I didn't do the other killings. I was going to kill her with a knife that was the same one, uh, just like the other one, so that it could be blamed on that guy. And I was going to go along and live my life. <laughs> so, like, dude, <laughs> why, what, what, is, what is going on in your mind? He's so weird. Oh, yeah. hey, I mean, I, mean I may be bad, but like, I'm not that bad. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's right. There might be, I don't know if there, I don't know if there's something there, but um, to talk about or you know, on a metaphorical level. Uh, but yeah, I he's my favorite part of the movie. Uh, but I also kind of like Caesar when he, I believe after this, he's can't be found. Um, and he goes off uh, and eventually finds the girl. Yeah, uh, Caligari kind of lures the woman in, and and uh, yeah, uh, yeah, like the, like Caesar wakes up and sees her, and she's like, ah, oh, it's scary. And then uh, yeah. like like she runs off, and then Caligari sort of creates a uh, motive, or not a motive, but an alibi by like. Uh, pretending that uh, Caesar Caesar is uh, there when it's really a, a a silly dummy, which I thought was funny. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, but, <laughs> but Caesar sneaks into the house and uh, he tries to kill, um, uh, like he tries to kill uh, this girl in a, in a pretty scary scene. But she manages to get a to get away. And I then, thought he wasn't trying to kill her, but he like fell in love with her and want, didn't know what love was and was trying to pos like. You are mine now. Maybe right, he was like, trying to kill her. Like Frankenstein. Yeah, I thought it was that kind of thing. Uh, either way, she thought he was going to kill her. And so she runs away and he chases after her. And another really great set design as well. Very strange. Um, well, they end up in a... He falls back to sleep, I guess, in a garden with a very weird jagged uh road um yeah, yeah the, the set design in this is very peculiar it's 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 what you can expect from german expressionism but it's like the the buildings are all funkily shaped and the uh like the paths like are curved and in a way that they aren't in real life uh, and, um, I was thinking as I was watching this, like, oh, this reminds me of Rob Zombie's, uh, Living Dead Girl music video. Oh, yeah. Uh, and, yeah. um, I, I've, I've watched this many times because I love the song and the, the music mm -hmm. video, but it makes sense because, uh, Rob Zombie is a horror nerd. So, of course, he would, yeah. he would borrow upon, yeah. uh, the cabinet of Dr. Caligari. But if you want to, like, a good visual of what that looks like, that, and, the, um, the Living Dead Girl is, uh a, is is um a sort of allusion to all of that but yeah you know, the set design uh it ad again it adds to the horror it adds to the feeling of of lost and wayward and uh not quite sure of your surroundings disorientation yeah. Is what I'm yeah i think the disorientation and the the abstract nature of of this world i guess um it, even though it's surreal, it it makes it feel more real. Like this mm -hmm. is what this is what being afraid feels like. Everything is unnatural and scary and uh, frightening. Uh, so I, I think you know it really works very well in in this horror genre, uh, German expressionism, and these unusual uh, shapes for all the infrastructure the bridges, the the streets, the buildings. Uh, it, it does make the anxiety uh, that much more um, uh, terrifying. Mm -hmm. All right, yeah. So the police investigate again. Uh, they find the dummy. And Francis goes off on his own to, to see if maybe the somnambulist was uh, originally from an asylum. And uh, when he gets to the uh, the asylum, he asks to see the the manager <laughs> or the <laughs> the um, the the guy in charge. 
And uh, when he gets into the director's office, he finds that it's Dr. Caligari. Whoa! Uh, and a reveal that is very hilarious to me, and and also a little bit scary because imagine <laughs> seeing the the person who's tormenting you is also like uh, the director of the asylum. Uh, like, yeah, it, it's just like, oh, look, this guy is there. I, I and I even expected it in a little way because I was like, this would be the most funny and also the most scary. And it, it, it is indeed <laughs> what happened. Yeah, I mean, it, I suppose it's funny for us. I, I, I don't know what people a hundred years ago would have thought. Maybe they would have also thought it was funny, uh, but they might not have, you know, not had as much experience watching film because it was still very new, but uh format but uh i guess in a way like yeah the horror of that is like the head of this institution is be- is the ultimate betrayal this person is not out for your own benefit right mm-hmm. and i suppose metaphorically speaking like no institutions are they're all out to get you <laughs> if we're going on on an extreme level um Wow. Which kind of- that is deeper than I thought. I, I thought I thought it was just like you know this man who's uh, supposedly trying to help the mentally ill is actually using the mentally ill um, as a way to kill. I don't know what Doctor Caligari is getting out of this. Maybe he's just a rotten person in his heart. But yeah, uh, yeah, it's a, it's it's sort of betraying the trust of the community. Well, he's doing experiments to see if he can make, um, they were reading it in one of the books, which is just a si- silly kind of info dump. Um, but the reading in one of the books that his goal is to see if he can make men commit acts while they're asleep that they wouldn't do otherwise. Uh, and if he's the head of an institution using the mentally ill or terrifying people to become mentally ill so he can use them for his experiments or whatever. Uh, Yeah, that would be devastating and horrible uh, and definitely very scary to come to terms with. Using science for evil. Um, But yeah, uh, I I thought that info dump was pretty cool, though. Like I like it. Ligari is apparently 200 years old or so. And yeah. he's uh, like he's managed to find this um, forever living uh, sleepwalker, uh, and he's just going from town to town, um, uh, getting him to kill people for 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 profit or whatnot. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, it's it's a pretty interesting info dump. And then, um, but but luckily at that point, Caligari is locked away. Um, He's put in a uh, in a um, in a room, and it's presumably a happy ending right there. Seemingly, until is it? the frame story comes back to the frame, uh, and the old man has been listening to this absolutely whack job story. <laughs> yeah and just kind of walks away from him and francis loses his mind like none of you believe me oh it's it's true uh and then you know finds that the, the director is in fact uh caligari or looks like him at least but he's like freaking out in the courtyard screaming at everyone yeah like francis is an inmate at this asylum uh as is his wife like the wife is just another woman who doesn't even like in love with him but francis yeah. seems to be in love with her and we see at the at the front at the um the, the background that indeed caligari is just some uh some director and um like because uh because francis told his story um Caligari is like or like the director is like oh yeah now that I know uh what his um delusions are I can properly treat him and then they yeah. they put uh they put um Francis in the same room that Dr Caligari was in his yeah. uh, hallucination and he pulls his glasses out so you can see for sure he's almost unrecognizable without the glasses I mean like I knew it was him but he looks very different without the glasses. They're very uh, unique, I suppose. Um, yeah, I suppose. It, well, one thing that I think makes this movie work so well is that the pacing is like pitch perfect. 
it's slow when it needs to be it builds up when it needs to and then i mean there's not a lot of fast action necessarily but like it hits you with really great dramatic twists and turns uh to keep things interesting even the the info dump which is kind of silly but i think it's cool the way the way it's explained the way they show it i think it's great it, it kind of makes me laugh <laughs> the way it is but it's more of a way it makes me laugh more because it's like uh, it feels what's the word anachronistic like something that could only work a hundred years ago if we if you did it today it wouldn't really it would be sit too over the top ridiculous i think mm -hmm. okay uh i i agree with that um i didn't know that the twist ending wasn't part of the director's original vision uh, yeah nor was the I mean, the whole framing was not part of it. And I'm I'm trying to figure out how would that change my understanding of the film? Because it's like, at the end, I'm not sure what to trust anymore. Uh, I've seen this horrible, frightening vision of the world. But like, once I'm in the institution, right at the end, nothing is um, there. Actually, not, nothing in the institution is like unusual and shows signs of the German expressionism um motifs uh, visually speaking uh so like i really like the framing i think it's great i think it adds a lot to the story uh, i guess the directors didn't want it um but if it didn't have it i'm not sure what i i, I think it would still be great but i'm not sure what i would take away from the film <laughs> well I I think it's great because um with the with this like you already can't trust your senses in the the frame story like it, it, it's like um the the set design is weird there's a bunch of close ups on characters who mm -hmm. are who look devilish and whatnot uh and um like for it to be revealed that this was all just in the imagination of a of a man who's mentally ill uh like it makes it makes a lot more sense now because this might be how that person sees the world right um slightly askew and uh like given their hyper fixation on dr caligari or the the the, uh, the asylum director uh like of course he would be like incredibly over the top kind of kind of evil so in that way I think it I think it works um and even mm. without it like the story would work but I think it um like it went, it probably wouldn't be as memorable because you know it it's a it's a story of of murders and whatnot but with this this frame job this frame like it's like oh this is uh, this is even more tragic than all of that because yeah. this person did not get get away they they they're stuck in this this sort of hell forever yeah, I agree. I think the people that wanted the the framing device had the right idea. I, I think it still would have been good without it, but this just takes it over the top. And I I feel like it's still supposed... Do you think it's an ambiguous ending, or is it like, no, he was mentally ill, and now the doctor um, knows what to do? Well, I that's a good question. I think... Uh... I think you could argue that because maybe in the end, Dr. Caligari won and he drove this man insane and is now pretending to be, uh, you, you know, like this, asy this asylum director, or he is the asylum director, but his in intentional goal was to draw more people in, to find more people. And he goes from town to town to do that. Yeah, uh, it could be. Like I this, they, they are now his literal cabinet. Like all of these are just this. Ah, that's uh, a really great idea. I didn't think about that at all. Uh, but I think the, the first time I watched it, I remember thinking that this was a lot about like, um, there was a whole sort of visual motif of like doubling in the sense that like, there's a way that you act, um, or there's sort of two different ways that you act. Uh, I especially with Dr. Caligari, he's sort of a Jekyll and Hyde kind of guy, right? Like as the director, he seems like a perfectly normal wants to help everybody kind of person, but he has the sinister side, um, which is Dr. Caligari. Is that really true? We can't really trust this guy. We have some visual clues. You know, the world looks scary and horrifying when he's telling the story and it looks pretty mundane and normal when he's 
like when we see the real world, so to speak. So not really sure if we can trust him. But even then, like, uh, in a way, like he's using Cesar, I suppose. Cesar is uh, just a sleepwalker. Um, but in a way, he's sort of being controlled uh, to do something, act in a different way. Uh, maybe not too much of the doubling there, but uh, yeah, I think I still felt like it was an ambiguous ending of we're not sure if we can, if he actually is just a good normal doctor. I think that's supposed to be what the ending is, but the way he pulls the glasses out, I mean, doesn't do too much over the top, but the way he pulls it up and like turns toward the camera to put it on and sort of does it kind of slowly. To me, it felt like, is he just the doctor or the director? I don't know anymore. What, hmm. uh, what do I think? What should I think? I'm not sure. The, the, the thing about it, though, is I, it does offer a bit of hope because he's like, now that I understand this man's yeah. delusion, I can help him. And I, I do like that because it's like, uh, may, this man is was mad at you and he, he made you the focus of all of, the, all of his rage mm -hmm. and, and shouting and whatnot. And you couldn't quite understand it. So you you told him or like you you had him tell the story and mm -hmm. that hopefully that revealed a little bit more insight. And in a way that does remind me of like Shutter Island. Um, yeah. Where it's a very similar sort of setup there and a, kind of an experiment to kind of figure out what the um, what the characters sort of anger and frustration Ugh. is. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. I think uh, one thing about like Dr. Caligari being the director or maybe being the director. Um, I was reading and it kind of makes sense. Um, I, I buy into it a little bit. Um, I was reading that some people think that this is a metaphor for World War I uh, because, you know, Germans uh, were fighting war and doing horrible things during World War I. Uh, and doing things that they would not otherwise normally be doing, just like Caesar uh, is constantly being used to kill for some reason that's not very clear what the goal is, what the objective is. It's kind of senseless, that kind of thing. Uh, so that's why I, I was kind of earlier making a point of like, if he's the, if he's actually the head of the institution, then you can't really trust any institutions uh, and, you know, if it is a metaphor for World War One, you can't trust the government uh, as an institution. They are lying to you, using you in, in whatever way. Now, that's just one theory. I, I kind of see it. Not sure if I totally buy into it, but it was uh, made in 1920, maybe filmed in 1919, 1920, very shortly after World War One ended. Right. So that would have been on the minds of people at the very least. So I think there is some influence there. Uh, but maybe the maybe the um the ending, if Dr. Caligari really is a good guy, good director, uh, you know, then we can trust him, right? Maybe. Yeah. I, I, I didn't get <laughs> so the, it's, it's I didn't get that. Unclear. I didn't get it either. I was I read that some other people saw that and i i can kind of see it but the ending then the adding the framing device then puts that into question because it seems like we can trust him it seems like he's actually a good director I, at the end of this movie i i wrote down my usual like great things and bad things about this movie like the set and the costumes are fun um like again adding to the delusion and the general horror of what you're seeing um, mm -hmm. a fun story like there's like there's probably something deeper to this that uh, I wasn't necessarily seeing but uh it's 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 a lot of fun to to watch everyone try to try to figure out what, what Dr. Caligari's deal is the music is rad I don't know if, if the music I was watching like was added later on after long after this movie was made and in, in the restoration uh, cause I heard guitar and I'm not really sure. If it... Oh yeah. I, I found two versions on YouTube and one had guitar and one had like an orchestra. And as soon as I heard guitar, I stopped because in my mind, like 
un unless it's an acoustic guitar uh, or with like nylon strings or a classical guitar um i don't really want to hear modern music in or modern instruments in a movie that's 100 years old i need to hear an orchestra otherwise it's all for naught in my mind i should have sent you the link to the one that i watched but okay i think we heard very different songs <laughs> but most likely but <laughs> i still think the music would have been rad either way like yeah i loved it i wrote bomb ass music score like six times on my on my notes here <laughs> wow uh, and then influential of course um mm -hmm. uh i i i just think like and of course tim burton as well as many other directors pillaged everything they could find from this mm -hmm. and um you know hollywood is better off for uh, being able to do that i'm actually surprised this wasn't remade um in america or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, I think it was remade. I don't know if it was remade in America, but maybe in Germany. No, it was remade in 1989 in America. Oh. A horror erotic film directed by Stephen Syed Syedian. I don't know who that is. There's a whole bunch of people I've never heard of. But it was remade. It looks psychosexual. Oh. And it's even shorter than this movie. <laughs> <laughs> uh okay what the okay let me explain one part of what i just read several other doc this is near the end of the movie or maybe the middle of it okay hang on no i need to explain the whole movie now because <laughs> <laughs> what is going on here um okay so 1989 dr caligari the mad doctor is in the main plot involves dr caligari's experiments with her patients at the cia Caligari Insane Asylum. <laughs> what? Where she transfers glandular brain fluids from one patient to another. <laughs> Two of her main patients, Mr. Pratt, a cannibalistic serial killer, and Mrs. Van Houten, a nymphomaniacal, a nymphomaniacal housewife, are the primary subjects of her mind swapping. That's... So, a, a cannibal serial killer and a horny wife... <laughs> uh mrs van houten become uh okay yeah uh mrs van houten becomes the cannibal and mr pratt the nympho although they seem to retain some elements of themselves as well apparently caligari's unconventional idea is to cure people by introducing equally opposite traits to balance out disturbed minds but this is never explained in the movie <laughs> 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 several <laughs> several other doctors a married couple mr and mrs lodger become concerned with caligari's experiments and approach mrs lodger's father dr aval who confronts caligari only to fall victim to her mind swapping and receive an injection of mrs van houten's brain fluid turning him into a transvestite nymphomaniac <laughs> what <laughs> Uh, I guess that's the end of it. It just talks about sex being a prominent theme. Mrs. Van Houten's boobs are out. She masturbates. Uh, nothing hardcore. Rated R. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, Dr. Caligar with thrown in. Uh, by the end of the film, Mrs. Van Houten has injected Dr. Caligari with her own nymphomaniacal brain fluid and herself with Caligari's ancestors. What? The original Dr. Caligari from <laughs> the cabinet of Dr. Caligari. <laughs> Thus, the patient becomes the doctor. The doctor becomes the patient and the inmates are left to run the asylum. I need to see this movie. Why didn't you make me watch this one? <laughs> I didn't even know this one existed. <laughs> oh, that might be even better than this one for, for the worst reasons. <laughs> um, well, I, I do like that it's um, subversive because... You know all the best yeah. horror movies are so mm. maybe it'll be good maybe it just <laughs> maybe the ridiculous nature of it will add to our enjoyment is it too late to ask to watch that one next month <laughs> no it's 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 not too late um also under like the bad things about this movie i just wrote a question mark i don't think there's anything bad about this movie like maybe yeah. the the film style or like not the film style but like the 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 camera work is is 100 years old so of course it looks bad um from mm. time to time um but i don't really hold that against the movie because the technology that was available yeah 
Um, I think the only bad thing for me, it's not even bad because I think the people who did the restoration of the film did a great job, but it's like every so often you sometimes see people skipping around because maybe a few frames were lost. That doesn't make it bad, but it's like, it would be great if those things didn't happen. And if they had like a, a uniform coloring system, because the one I, I don't know about the one you watched, but the restoration I watched constantly changed film tone. Sometimes it was orange, sometimes it was magenta, sometimes it was green or blue or something like that. I thought that was intentional. I think it was, but it was, I, from what I understand, uh, I mean, I think it says at the beginning that they tried to follow the notes or something like that. That's not a big deal. I don't think it's bad. I just, I kind of wish it was, actually, sometimes I think it worked really well. Sometimes the color changed for a certain feeling, uh, but sometimes it felt like it just kind of randomly happened, but it's not even a bad thing. But if they could have had a perfect reel, that would have been great. Okay. That's all my thoughts. I love it. No, no notes, as they say. Yeah. Um, well, I, I, I definitely recommend this, uh, to everyone who's, uh, watching out there. Uh, I, I really love the style of film and it's, it's a fun addition to, like, it's one of the first additions to the, the horror canon. So, um, definitely go seek it out if you haven't done it. But yeah, so now that we're at the end of the video, uh, Lucas, uh, what do you have planned for November? Well, I won't make you watch Dr. Caligari because I don't know where to find that, but I want to, and I'm going to look for it and watch it myself. And if it's good, I will tell you, but we are going to watch a Chinese film by a female director. Uh, and it is called Egg and Stone, directed by Huang Ji in 2012. And we will watch it on Criterion Channel. Here, you can see okay. yourself. Egg and Stone. Um, I never heard of that. I, I don't think... Well, I can't say that. I've watched a bunch of Hong Kong movies. If you can count that as Chinese cinema, which, I don't know, some people yeah, might not. It is. Um, uh, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it, too. Should be good. Hopefully. Oh. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, look up, be on the lookout for that uh, in the month of November. Uh, but again, as uh, as we, we um, as we've been saying, we we all love the cabinet of Dr. Caligari, and we hope you go see it during this month of October. Uh, but until then, uh, yeah, you know, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, uh, and also leave a comment if you are interested in you know having a conversation about this this sort of movie. Uh, join the Discord um, where we, we talk about movies, video games, and books and whatnot. And until then, um, we wish you the best of luck in your weird and horror-driven travels. Farewell. Farewell. <laughs>